what we have here on the screen is the basic block diagram of the 9361. Um, it is the transceiver that's incorporated into the Pico ZSDR. It has a tuning range from 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz and an, a programmable RF bandwidth of uh, 200 kilohertz to 56 megahertz. And when I say that, what I mean is like there's basically internal analog filters that actually allow you to program the bandwidth. Um, so you can set the RF bandwidth, the ADC sample rate, as well as the, configure the half band filters over here. And we can play with them and see what they, they kind of do. So um, it also has like ADCs, DACs, digital filters, digital interface, uh, enable state machine. So it has a state machine in here specifically for TDD modes or time division duplex modes as, a, as opposed to um, frequency division duplex. It has a complete AGC block in here that can be used in uh, a manual mode, a uh, fast mode, and a kind of a slow attack mode. As well as in the manual mode, you can do use pin control to, uh, to monitor different things inside the device and uh, set up your own state machine in an FPGA if uh, the AGC control loops inside the device don't work for you. you can, uh, it also has auxiliary ADCs, DACs, and GPO, GPOs to control RF blocks that would be over here. And uh, for example, the um, personality card that we use, we have a LNA that has a bypassable switch. So we're able to incorporate that bypassable switch into our AGC loops. So when the gain is really low, we can actually give it an, an additional 20 dB of gain outside the device. And the AGC loops in here know how to control that and those kinds of things. As well as analog and digital calibration and correction. And what that means is we get very, very good EVM performance um, or image rejection or images, th that kind of an idea. So we can kind of actually just kind of flip over and uh, look at uh, the system right here. So this is actually running directly on the Zinc. We can see here the uname says Linux on the ARM. We can uh, cat, uh, proc, uh, CPU, info. And I can see that it's a dual core ARM um, and I, it's a Xilinx Zinc. And I can run uh, top and I can see all the different things. Here's our little OSC application running, which is the application that is, uh, it's an open source application. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what it's for, but it's, it's kind of like the GUI software for like looking at things and controlling things. So I'll just kind of flip over to that right here. And we can see that we're doing an FFT. We can see that on the screen here, here's our, uh, our marker up um, and we're basically sending a uh, CW tone. And here's how we can control things, where we can control our RF bandwidth, our, uh, of the transmit side, of the receive side, enable or disable uh, fur filters. Uh, we can, we're basically sending one CW tone, and you can see the noise shaping of the ADC. So we use a continuous time sigma delta converter, and uh, that basically takes the noise in your bandwidth of interest and pushes it out to the edges. That's part of the signal processing pieces at the, the, in the converter itself. And that's why we have these, uh, these edges that come up over here. Uh, so if our bandwidth is from like here to here, what we can then do is we can enable a fur filter. And uh, now we actually get rid of those edges and push them down even more with our 128 programmable fur filter. So now our noise floor is uh, almost 100 and, uh, 110 100 dB kind of an idea with only a 12-bit system, which is uh, uh, incredibly good performance. And we can see that if we look for images, uh, the image marker, our image is basically down underneath uh, 95 dB kind of an idea, 90, 92, 93, which is a uh, very good performance. If, uh, and, and as we go along, we'll, uh, we'll kind of talk about some of the theory pieces on the slides and kind of actually have a look at the demo to see how kind of things run. So we flip back to the slides for a second. Uh, you know, we do have a very configurable part, integrated 12-bit ADCs and DACs, LNA. It's a two by two, meaning we have two receive channels, two transmit channels. The, uh, the part that we uh, don't have two of is we have a receive LO and a transmit LO. So you can receive and transmit on different frequencies, but the two receivers are um, on one, from one LO. And those, that is uh, phase and frequency locked because it is just one LO that splits up into two. 
Um, so if we go back over to our uh, the demo, we can actually kind of see over here um, inside the demo, there is a block diagram, a very familiar block diagram, which shows our one LO driving up into our two receive blocks and one transmit LO driving down into our two transmit blocks. And then I can go back to the slides. Um, yes. So like Luke was saying, it has a, an excellent noise figure of about uh, 2.5 dBm and about minus 40 dB of EVM. And for those people who don't know what EVM means is if you think of a constellation, that is the difference between where the dot actually is based on the receive path or the transmit path and where the theoretical um, best performance is. So it does have a manual, automatic, uh, slow attack, fast attack, uh, AGC, uh, internal LNA, internal mixer stage that works from 70 to 70 megahertz to 6,000 megahertz or 6 gig, uh, transimpedance amplifier, low pass filter, continuous time sigma delta, and uh, the ADC. And, uh, and then on the other side is like the programmable fur and uh, the digital filters as well. So it has complete analog and digital signal chain. Uh, the way that we're able to get this very, very wide tuning range is we actually have an integrated VCO that goes from uh, 6 to 12 gigahertz internal to device. And then we have these massive divide by two blocks, uh, which gives us basically our 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. And there are actually ways to uh, frequency synchronize multiple devices. Um, we actually have FMC cards which show you how to synchronize a a 4x4 system known as the FMCOMS5. Um, and then we're uh, working on different systems to show people actually how to do things with like this uh, PicoZ as well. But you still get this very wide coverage from 70 megahertz to 6 gig. Uh, you know, it is two separate IQ channels, three inputs for each channel. So this is what the device supports. The, uh, the PicoZ SDR, it supports two of these inputs. So it has an A and a B, and the third one is unused for two channels. So that is uh, four of the UFL connectors are for receive. Uh, you can't use A and B at the same time. And then it has about, uh, I think it's 80 dB of isolation between the channels. I think that's right, yeah. So the, on the ADC side, there are these half-band filters for decimation as well so that we can get our uh, programmable FIR filter. And we'll, we'll, like we showed uh, here in our, on the demo system, uh, when we enabled the fur filters, our, uh, the noise in the, that we pushed out of our bandwidth of interest gets pushed down, basically try to eliminate that. It goes down to like minus 120 dB as opposed to when we had the fur filter off. Let me just turn off auto scale. So we can kind of see that a little bit better. And then we turn the fur filters off. And then it comes back up to about 90. So we can push this down by uh, almost 30, the noise where we're not interested in about 30 dB. So to, to get your maximum performance. So kind of look, looking back at the slides, on the transmit side, we have uh, two, another two outputs, an A and a B. And again, that's on the PicoZ, so you can actually use different things or different um, A and B outputs. So two channels, two A and B on both channels is uh, four connectors for uh, transmit as well. So four connectors for receive, four connectors for transmit. And the reason you may want an A and a B channel is if you have uh, narrow channels and you want to have very cheap analog filters on both channels, you can actually implement like an A and a B L and A or an A and a B um, filter network and then switch between them. And uh, again, there's a large digital filter chain on the, uh, the other piece or on the transmit side as well for interpolation. So the device interface itself supports basically anything from um, uh, a 500 kilohertz to uh, 61.44 mega samples per second. And then the, you would upsample in these half band filters to get up to the DAC, which can be sampled up to 320 mega samples a second.
and uh, you know, we use various control logic, build test systems, uh, you know, trying to use your uh, simulate before you build. Um, before I pass things over to Tim to talk a little bit more about this, we can kind of get an idea of um, over here is if I come down and onto the demo system and play back a LTE 20 file. So I generate LTE 20 waveform with the LTE toolbox from MathWorks. I load that up into the system and now I'm generating an LTE 20 f file. If I, uh, and you can kind of see if I uh, zoom in right here, it definitely has a curve to it. The passband is not flat. And that's because this is actually being done by the analog filters. If I'm interested in 15 uh, megahertz of analog bandwidth, that's what these are set for. And so there is some dr small amount of droop out in the passband. And I can compensate for that by actually compensating for it in the FIR filter. And I turn the FIR filter on, and now the passband is totally flat. So now your equalization, your digital baseband, doesn't have to actually work as hard to actually equalize things because we're equalizing for it in the, AD, in the uh, transceiver itself. And this is what LTE20 looks like with the filter on and with the filter off. You can see that our noise floor comes way up and then there is some small amount of curve in here. And so to get the most performance, you want to make sure that you're designing a filter for the waveforms for your bandwidth that you actually need.